We all saw and witnessed it, so yes, the Penn State Nittany Lions beat the 1997 Iowa Hawkeyes wrestling scoring record at NCAAs. The former record being 170 points, and Penn State's new record is 72.5 points. Obviously, when you just look at the numbers, is a very tight margin. For example, if Iowa would have had one more finalist win, they would still have the record today. However, if we take a deeper look into this hypothetical team race, there's a lot more to talk about than people think. Before we totally dive into this fun topic, welcome back everyone to True Tan Wrestling, the one-stop shop for everything purple and wrestling related. Some quick elephants in the room that I need to address before we get started. Yes, I did not do a traditional NCAA wrestling recap. I was actually at the event and it was everything and more than I could have imagined for it being my first time being there live. On that note, I really want to do an NCAA recap right. And just going weight by weight, round over round, and talking about every upset in my normal style video just didn't feel right to me. So to sidebar that for a quick second, I also wanted to thank everyone for all the love on my recent documentary about the 2018 National Tournament. I put a ton of time into it, and if you haven't seen it, please go check it out. I would very much appreciate it. For everyone who left a comment, I really appreciate the kind words. It really goes a long way. Now back to the 2024 NCAA Tournament. I decided from here on out on good old True Tam Wrestling and to keep myself accountable year over year. Every year, I will do a documentary style video covering the year priors NCAA. That's right, so the Monday leading up to the 2025 NCAA tournament, there will be a true tan stamped documentary covering the 2024 season. In my opinion, I just think this is the best way to cover that tournament. There's just so much that goes into it and just doing my normal style video on it. Yes, I would put a lot of time into that as well, but I think it just deserves a mini documentary. I don't think I'll ever top that 2018 tournament, but who knows. Now with that longer than usual intro out of the way, let's finally talk about what everyone clicked on this video to hear. The 1997 record-breaking Iowa Hawkeyes versus the new 2024 Penn State Nittany Lions. For starters, the scoring was slightly different in 1997. You can take that information how you will, and I'm sure Hawkeye fans can take it and run with it. But to be honest, that's the least of our concerns heading into this video. Another major difference was the backside wrestling in 1997. They sort of did a follow the leader style bracket. What I mean by that is if you lost in the first round and the wrestler who beat you didn't make it to the quarters, you were cut from the tournament, essentially going 0-1 on the day. A little harsh, but that was just the way things were back then. Now to do a whiteboard war between the two teams, all 10 wrestlers going up against each other, I think is the wrong way to go about this. I think the best way is to take the pros and cons of both teams' performances at the tournament and kind of just go from there. With that said, let's start with the 1997 National Tournament Champions, the Iowa Hawkeyes. I'm sure the 2024 tournament is pretty fresh in everyone's mind still, so we'll cover that in just a little bit. But for now, let's do a good old classic True Tan Wrestling history lesson. 997 was actually wrestled at Northern Iowa, which we all know purple is a pretty cool color. So that's one point for the 1997 tournament. On a serious note, I actually covered this team all the way back when I compared all the national title teams that got five national champs. And yes, Iowa did accomplish that feat for the second time in school history this year. Their champions included Jesse Whitmer, Mark Ironside, Lincoln McElravey, Lee Fullhart, and Joe Williams, which are some of the best Hawkeyes to ever take the mat for them. If you want more details on their credentials and how great that team truly was, I go on a lot more detail in that at five champs video which is linked in the video and in the description below however for such a great team on paper hanging into the tournament iowa wasn't even predicted to win it which is absolutely insane it's even crazier when you end up looking at the overall team score at the end of it they lost to oklahoma state at national duels along with some other head scratching moments they were probably predicted to take second behind oklahoma state however dan gable was not in his career on a bad note and he not only overthrew the cowboys he broke the overall team record in what should have been a very, very competitive team race. I mean, Oklahoma State still scored well over 100 points with strong teams like Minnesota and Iowa State right behind them. Not to jump around too much, we all know the second place team race in 2024 was really fun to watch, but no one was even close to scoring 100 points behind Penn State, who absolutely blew past everyone very early into the tournament. So besides Iowa's five champs, who else did they really have? Well, they had one other finalist and Mike Mena who lost a 
Oklahoma State legend Eric Guerrero in overtime. So if that would have been reversed going Iowa's way, they would still have the scoring record today, obviously. And the most national champs ever in NCAA history was six, which is also very crazy. Iowa also had two more All-Americans bringing their total All-American honors to eight on the year. Their two non-All-Americans this year at 177 and 275 both made the blood round fun fact, so they were also super close to getting 10 All-Americans. Now, as we move closer to talking about 2024, I think we can all agree that that 1997 Iowa team was very good. I mean, you don't set a record by not being good. But there was also something else that was very interesting, and I think some people might have picked up on it. But the 1997 Hawkeye experience at the national tournament was also oddly similar to the 2024 Penn State experience. They both had eight All-Americans, two wrestlers lost in the blood round, and they had six finalists. However, there was a lot of differences as well well and maybe some of those differences you could argue lean towards Iowa's favor but let's just get into 2024 and we can hash that out at the end. So Penn State's six national finalists they had four national champs those four being Levi Haynes, Carter Staraki, Aaron Brooks, and Greg Kirkfleet. Two of those wrestlers capturing their first and the other two entering a very select group of four-time national champs which to have two on the same team leaving at the same time is honestly really insane and I think we can all agree with that no matter what fan base you're a part of. The worst place finisher if you even want to call it that was in fifth place with Bernie Truax and that is still a very high place to finish and then they had a literal backside hero in true freshman Tyler Kasich losing round one and wrestling all the way back to take third place looking like a literal giant slayer doing it. On that same note though that brings up a very interesting point against Penn State's overall score. Back in 1997 Kasich and Nagao, who both lost in the first round of the tournament, would have went 0-1 and would have never even been able to make the blood round or, in Kasich's case, All-American, considering the wrestler who beat them in the first round lost in the very next round. So that fact alone would have knocked Penn State out of the running to even break the record back in 1997. On that same note, I think the fall of the leader style is a pretty dumb way to run a bracket. So a weak argument, but it still stands in the room. Now that we laid down some facts for both teams, I think there is really only one number-based way to really decide who's better. And even then, I don't really know because at the end of the day, wrestling in 1997 was way different than it is now, but that's weak. So let's get back to the numbers where I feel comfortable. The last number-based argument that we can try is taking the seeds and seeing who overperformed more. Clearly, some of these seeds were a little off, but that's just what we're going to try. Again, Iowa had things a lot different, only seeding up to 12 and the rest being unseeded where today, obviously, everyone is seeded. And there's 33 wrestlers in the field where there was not that many back in 1997. Also, how I based unseeded guys overperforming into the All-American rounds was I just placed them at the 13 seed and then figure it out from there. For example, Iowa had Casey Gillis at 142 and he was unseeded. He eventually placed six, so I just made him the 13 seed so he overperformed his seed by plus seven so with all that laid out Iowa outplaced their seeds by 26 points a major contributor to this was obviously having unseated guys place and make the blood round but they also had three of their six finalists not even supposed to be national finalists that year Obviously, it does help them a little bit with unseated guys making those All-American rounds, but still 26 is quite an overperformance based on seed. Penn State, on the other hand, outplaced their seeds by only three. Now, with all that data done, Penn State did have an altogether way better season than Iowa. The only reason Iowa's seeds were so low was because of how poor their season was compared to their standard. We also have to consider that Carter Staraki was a nine seed, so that really helped Penn State boost that up. They had Brayden Davis, who was a one seed, and he ended up not even placing. So when you look at it through that lens, it seemed like Iowa could do no wrong with almost everyone overperforming, where with Penn State, it kind of showed where they could have done better in some areas, I guess. So after drowning you all in that logic, who's better? Well, to be honest, I really don't know. You could take this argument left, right, center, or even to Purpleville. 
I will beat them by a lot by outplacing their seed slash overperforming, but Penn State had a way better overall season, and they still beat the record at the end of the day. Iowa had five national champs to Penn State's four, but Penn State had two four-timers on the team, with one of them winning with basically one leg. Iowa had a lot of studs on the team, don't get me wrong, but as a team, they weren't even expected to win it with a huge monster team in front of them. Penn State dominated their field all year and at the national tournament. The race for second was fun because it was deep between those teams, but Penn State was leaps and bounds above them. So at the end of the day, I think you could pick either team is better. I think some people will side with Penn State and others will side with Iowa. How about this? How about you all let me know who's better in the comment section below. Either way, this was still an awesome video to dive into. I love going back in time and learning some wrestling history, and I love recapping events from just a couple days ago. Either way, I hope the NCAA continues to have record-breaking moments, simple moments, and exciting storylines to the day I die. Now with all that said, once again, thank you all very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to leave a like, hit that subscribe button, and leave a comment on if there was anything I missed from these two record-breaking teams. Now, take care, everybody.